good morning or good morning. So I just wanted to make this video um, on um, why uh, technical levels, uh, you know, don't work um, at certain times. And um, I know it sounds like an obvious thing, right? We can see, look back on a chart and back test and basically say, oh, well, of course we know that, you know, certain supply and demand zones don't work here and there, but more, you know, delving into um, uh, not only the strategy in terms of, you know, setups that you take, but also as well, just understanding the randomness of things that are beyond your control, right? Um, and that, you know, affects your um, your trade in the, sh might affect trading in the short term, but in the, over the medium to long term, as long as you've got really good risk reward profile, you'll be fine. But you have to understand that, um, there are going to be times when you got pretty much like an A1 setup and it might not work out. Whereas you might have, um, you know, another A1 setup in another chart and it did work out. And you're scratching your head and saying, why did that one work out? And why didn't this one work out? Etc. Etc. So I'm going to go through these things. And as you know, we are, you know, fundamental uh, protagonists, right? We, um, you know, we're, we're definitely... Um, you know, take that into account. Now, you've got two charts. You've got the Euro British pound, yeah, and you've got the um, Euro New Zealand, and they pretty much have um, you know the same setup, right? Which is um, a CPR, right? Uh, demand zone, right here. So Euro New Zealand, Euro, um, uh, yeah, Euro New Zealand and the Euro pound, right? Now, um, the Euro pound didn't work out. Yeah, the Euro New Zealand uh, did work out. Yeah, and so you're thinking to yourself, well, well, why was that? And again, it's because of factors really going on beyond, um, you know, uh, a, a price chart. Now, yesterday um, uh, we had um, an incident where we had some dovishness come in um, from certain ECB members, European Central Bank members who were um, basically saying that they thought that in the March meeting, I think it's the March meeting anyway, um, or the one after the next, uh, you know, they that the ECB were potentially likely to not hike rates as much as previously thought, which then caused the market to have to reevaluate uh, the currency. Meaning, um, you know, the market is always future thinking, always forward thinking. And so, um, you know, it's it's a kind of buy the rumor, sell the fact um, scenario at all, pretty much at all times. Everything is priced in and if it's not priced in, then it will be priced in. Um, and uh, and so what happened on the euro pound is that, you know, yes, uh, what was that on the on the yeah, sorry, on Wednesday, the 18th, there was this uh, this setup, really nice setup. And I took this trade um, and lost, right? No big deal. It happens all the time. Uh, it's like breathing, right? You breathe in, you breathe out, you lose trades, you win trades. Um, but the trade I thought I would take simply because during the morning when I, well, at, at this, uh, on, the, on the 17th, when the news kind of came out, which drew, uh, you know, the, 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 the move to the downside in terms of, you know, the dovishness, potential dovish, dovishness of the ECB on the 17th, you know, this is what drove prices down towards a nice, you know, uh, uh, area of setup. And then looking for uh, an entry, which I got. And at the time of the entry, we had one of the um, European Central Bank members come out and say, well, pretty much, no, 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 um, you know, it's, 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 it's fine, right? Everything is okay. You know, the, the European Central Bank is probably likely to continue, you know, Christine Lagarde is likely to continue uh, with, uh, you know, hawkishness. Um, and, you know, uh, the, the market kind of, you know, rallied a bit, right? Everything was looking good. And then it kind of plunged again, right? And it went to the, you know, it went to down to more of a daily demand zone because ultimately, what are demand zones? Demand zones are areas of potential value, not not, you know, exact value, right? It was it was value here because prices went to the upside, and the question is always, will it be value here? Nobody knows. It's the reason why we manage our risk. If we knew for sure, certainty, one hundred percent, then I would, you know, risk one hundred percent of my profits on this trade, right? Um, but we don't, so we just you know manage our risk. Now, this was a uh, factors beyond the technical setup. 
Yeah. So beyond the technical setup, there are things going on which dictate what price is likely to do. Now, um, we weren't wrong in our assessment or I wasn't wrong in my assessment of the euro pound, right? I still believe the euro is in a better position than the pound. And so um, what the market is doing is saying ultimately that this is a potential bargain, was a potential bargain, but we just don't agree at this point in time, right? We want to get a cheaper price, which it turns out that they actually did end up getting a cheaper price for those um, who wanted to buy into the euro. Um, so... You know, we I did say yesterday as well uh, in the group that you would probably end up having to wait for Le Christine Lagarde to come out um, and really put a, um, you know, uh, a, a kind of confirm her hawkishness, which she pretty much did. And we can see that the ECB, this is today's report from ING, uh, Euro ECB dovish speculation didn't last long. So the European Central Bank provided a very reasonable amount of pushback against reports earlier this week that suggested 25 basis point increase were being considered, right? So, you know, going back to, um, you know, uh, this, uh, you know, obviously uh, yesterday, uh, we did have Christine Lagarde push back on that and you can start to see now, you know, the reaction of of this because now the market is probably now revaluing the fact that, yeah, everything's on track, right? I'm not saying that prices are going to go to the moon or anything like that. I'm just saying that, you know, this is definitely now um, uh, a, a, a decent bargain zone and if prices do come back, then possibly, you know, you want to, if you haven't got into this trade, you know, you may, may want to be a buyer. Um, and as long as obviously the British pound continue to suffer, which it looks like reports are coming out that, um, you know, the, the, the data might be better than expected, which is a really kind of strange one. Or uh, things aren't as bad as they seem, which uh, that is, again, yet to remain to be seen. But either way, this was, um, you know, this is what, what, what was happening, right? So we had a, a pretty, you know, uh, stand set up, good set up not work out and this is due to uh things going on behind the scenes now again nobody knows sometimes this can work out in your favor and sometimes it won't right so we go to the euro new zealand and you know again same setup but in fact this one ended up working right again the timing of things so that was when the ecb were a bit dovish or the reports were a bit dovish um and then as we got to you know um you know wednesday even the, uh, the day before um one of the ecb members came out before christine lagarde you know um that ended up being um kind of like the limit and then we ended up getting uh in fact i think the prime minister of new zealand um uh, surprise uh, resigned right so um that ended up being something again that people just can't you can't predict or forecast right or the average uh, retail trader can't um, or, or wouldn't be able to unless you're really following closely, you know, their politics and um, and maybe there was, a, again, a, a potential for her to, to go. But ultimately, um, we had news events, right, that coincided with both the move to the downside and also the move to the upside. And so... When you're looking at, you know, back testing, um, you know, strategies and and looking at, you know, levels and things like that, one of the things you have to, well, most traders won't be aware, um, if especially if you're back testing, because it's pretty much very difficult to go back to every single move and it, it depended on the time frames that you're looking at, um, you know, to go back and say, well, what happened here? What happened there? Why here? Why there? Because it, especially even in the short term, um, prices are driven by uh, more liquidity and um, uh, yeah, so more of a, more of a liquidity um, from a liquidity perspective, market makers, etc. But over the medium to long term, they're driven by, you know, fundamentals and, and risk sentiment. So, but when you're looking back on um, on trades and trade setups, it's always, um, I guess, uh, you have to understand this is that, um, you know, not all levels are going to work. Nobody can predict the future. Um, you know, price in the in the medium to short term is um, so medium to long term is driven by more fundamentals. And as long as you get the direction right overall, if you can get the direction correct and you think that price is going to move, you know, five, six, seven hundred pips, a thousand pips into the future, um, then 
one level, you know, one trade does not, uh, you know, ruin, you know, your account, etc. All you're doing is ultimately, as you've seen on the euro pound, is you see a level, you take the trade, cool, you didn't get, you know, that didn't, that level didn't work out. You wait for a lower level to re-emerge, that is the level that you want to get involved in. Brilliant, okay, excellent, there's an entry, and then you look for, um, you know, a trade there. Rather than trying to chase uh, you know, price going lower and then trade and then it reverses on you, then you're trying to buy at highs and then you end up, you know, buying at lows and then you, you know, if, if that was the case, then technical analysis, you know, so many people would be uh, a lot more successful at uh, technical analysis. If that's all you need, the people wouldn't need fundamental analysis and banks wouldn't use fundamental analysis, but we know that they do because they write reports, you know, daily, weekly, monthly reports on the fundamentals and valuations. So ultimately, um, you know your trading strategy and the trading strategies that we use. This is these are these are the filters that we have to uh, use, and this is what we understand. Um, you know goes on. It's nothing you know to do with you. It's nothing to do with the trading strategy per se. Um, as to why you know you might you might lose a trade or two or three or even go through a losing streak, right? Because sentiment could be against you. Whatever it is, I don't know what time frame you're trading, what entries you're using no idea even though you should be following you know my entries so and you know my strategies to the t but um ultimately um when you um you know understand the the dominant um uh, i guess uh, valuation and fundamentals and, and risk sentiment and what is really going on as to the reasons why you won't be disappointed when you lose a trade or two and just understand that you know what it is what it is you lose a trade you move on you buy at a, at a better level right it's not you know some people might call it catching a falling knife um in my book it's not catching a falling knife it really is just understanding where bargains potentially are on a price chart and if the market agrees with you at that time then brilliant if it doesn't agree with you because there are things going on but beyond the price chart uh, you know, fundamentals, resentment that you're maybe not aware of, or even if you are aware of, right? Um, you know, it still might go against you. Um, just look for, you know, the, uh, the the lower level if the fundamentals have not changed and resentment has not changed um, in your favor. So, yeah, um, levels work, levels don't, but the key is to when you make money and when you you know you run a winning trade is to try to make as much money as you can from your winning trades and really um, uh, 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 mitigate the uh, losing trades and and reduce the risk on your losing trades. I know it sounds very cliche, but that is pretty much you know what we're doing week in week out, day in day out, month in month out. Anyways, guys, hope that helps and take care and speak to you soon.